Look at this. ChatGPT is the fifth biggest website in the world, but they're still not making any money. How is that even possible? I studied OpenAI's business model to find out. I'm going to break it down into nine building blocks so we can understand why they're losing so much money and why it's so hard to turn AI into a profitable business. The first building block is customer segments. There are three main customer groups, individuals, enterprises, and developers. But now, about 700 million people use ChatGPT every week and increasingly rely on it to work, to learn, for advice, to create, and much more. It's exciting because the audience is huge, but it makes the business model complicated, as you'll see as we walk through the rest of the business model canvas. So why do people use it? The promise of ChatGPT is that you can ask it almost anything, and it will give you back something useful almost instantly. But with GPT-5, now it's like talking to an expert, a legitimate PhD level expert in anything, any area you need, on demand, that can help you with whatever your goals are. So where do you go to use ChatGPT? The obvious places are the website and the mobile app. But what really sets it apart are its distribution deals. Apple now lets you switch on ChatGPT inside iPhones, so millions of users can reach it right from their pocket. And Microsoft has gone even further, building ChatGPT directly into Office and Windows. And that kind of distribution is a dream for any product, because it means ChatGPT isn't something you have to go out and find. It's starting to come built into the products that people use daily. So how does ChatGPT manage a relationship with hundreds of millions of people? Well, there isn't a massive customer service team sitting in a call center somewhere answering phones or typing emails. The whole experience is self-service and automated. You sign up on your own, you start typing, and from that moment on, AI itself handles everything. ChatGPT feels different from almost any other software that we've seen before. Over time, it starts to pick up on your preferences through conversation. It can remember what you asked last week, and it begins to feel less like a tool and more like a personal companion that really knows you. I think we are heading towards a world where if you want, the AI will just have like unbelievable context on your life and give you these super, super helpful answers. And because people are constantly showing their friends and colleagues what it can do, it spreads virally via word of mouth. How does OpenAI make money? The first revenue stream is subscription fees. A small percentage of users pay $20 a month for ChatGPT+, and there's a higher price for power users. The second is enterprise deals. Companies pay for their own secure version of ChatGPT with privacy and compliance built in. And the third one is the API, where developers plug the AI model into their apps and pay by usage, like running a meter. And OpenAI is constantly testing new ideas, like taking a cut when ChatGPT books things for you, or even running ads inside ChatGPT. So what does it take to keep ChatGPT running every day? There are four things they need. The first are the AI models themselves. These are the brains of the system. The second is the hardware. They have entire data centers filled with GPUs using huge amounts of electricity as they process requests. All day long, I call people and beg them to give us their GPUs. That's how scarce and essential these chips are. The third is people, researchers designing new models, engineers patching servers at three o'clock in the morning, and safety teams trying to prevent harmful outputs. And the fourth is financial, cash, billions of dollars from investors to pay for all of it. Take away any of them and the business model doesn't work. What is OpenAI actually working on behind the scenes? They're training new models, running computers flat out, they're scaling up infrastructure so systems can handle millions of users logging in at the same time. They're building new features like voice and memory to make ChatGPT more useful. And they're raising money because each of these steps costs billions of dollars. It's not just one big launch followed by a rest. It's a cycle of research, scaling, product building, and fundraising that never really ends. I have never seen growth in any company one that I've been involved with or not like this, uh, like the growth of ChatGPT 
It is, it's really fun. I feel like great, deeply honored, but the, it is crazy to live through and our teams are exhausted and stressed and we're trying to keep things up. So who are the key partners OpenAI depends on? Microsoft is the biggest. They invested billions and ChatGPT runs on their cloud servers. That gives Microsoft huge leverage. Every ChatGPT conversation is also a bill paid to Microsoft and they get to weave the technology into Office and Windows. NVIDIA is another key partner. They make the chips that train and run these AI models and demand is so high that OpenAI has to compete with Google and Meta just to buy enough of them. Oracle is a new key partner and provides extra server capacity. These partners aren't just suppliers. They have a lot of power because OpenAI can't easily replace them. And here's the main problem. Every time someone uses ChatGPT, it costs money, computing power, electricity, hardware. For one conversation, that cost is tiny, but multiply it by hundreds of millions of users having billions of conversations, and it adds up fast. Most software gets cheaper per user as it grows. ChatGPT works backwards. The more popular it becomes, the more expensive it gets to run. On the compute side, yeah, this is like the biggest infrastructure project, certainly that I've ever seen. Possibly it will become the big, I think it will. Maybe already is the biggest and most expensive one in human history. And the more ChatGPT grows, the bigger the problem gets. This breaks the fundamental rule that makes traditional software companies profitable. But wait, there's a method to the madness. OpenAI's strategy is to get ChatGPT into as many hands as possible first, no matter the cost. The more people who try it, the more the habits form, the more the brand sticks, and the more valuable it all becomes. Every new conversation also helps them improve the product faster, which keeps them ahead of their rivals. If the plan works, OpenAI will eventually make back all that lost money and much more. Most other businesses don't have these advantages. If you or me tried to do the same thing, we'd probably run out of cash. That's why we broke down the business model using the business model canvas. It helps you see the full picture, not just the product, but the whole system behind it. And if you're building something yourself, especially with AI and maybe with ChatGPT, you can use this same framework to spot weaknesses early and build a business that lasts over the long term. If you want to map out your own business model and work with me one on one, then click the link in the description below. And if you're still here and you enjoyed the video, well, you should watch this video next. See you in the next one.